Maybe. Yeah. Jim, obviously joined by Mike Perry, head of UFC 229. Uh, Mike, you were just telling us that you, you've been here, well, you've just come here, especially for the fights on Saturday. Like, uh, have you got a ticket? No, I don't need a ticket. I am the ticket, baby. <laughs> Platinum ticket. Wristband. The How IP are? section, then? Uh, yeah, something like that. I think we might have a skybox or some shit. I'd rather see it from up there anyways. I mean, I don't know. I just, it'll be nice to see with without the... Uh, the pillars in the way and things like that. I want to see, I want to see Connor how he moves and shit, man. I got some some things to learn. I definitely listen to him talk and try to pick up some areas there. So a lot of people like you know they say they don't like all the chat that Connor comes out with, but actually, do you like it? Who don't like it? What you mean you don't like it? That's what you watch for. To listen to his ass talk, and he's 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 smooth, man. He's clever. I can't. I can't hate on that, bro. He uh, he speaks some real shit, and uh, you know it's just I'm taking notes, man. You know what I'm saying? My time's gonna come. I feel like the two of you guys going back and forth would be incredible. Would you want that challenge verbally of you know sparring with him on stage at some point? I mean, absolutely, I would want that. Yes, I would want that. <laughs> Break out the red panties, baby. <laughs> We get paid. I just saw on your Instagram, speaking of taking notes, that you noticed Adi Abdelaziz's uh, thing and you asked him where Noah. <laughs> Did you see that? Was that the right name on the, on the shit? Yeah, bro. I was I was behind somebody in the Starbucks line at, and I said, Ali Abdel Abziz, how's Noah, huh? <laughs> you mad rat. That shit was crazy, bro. And I'm sitting in line at Starbucks and the name tag's right there. I'm like, yo, that's is this the dude that they were talking about? I don't know if it was him, but... It's all good. I ain't got no beef with either side, Russia or or Ireland. We can make some beef though, America. Who do you fancy in this fight, Conor or Khabib? Oh man, I'm going with the striker. I'm going with Ireland. I think uh, Khabib is very sloppy on how he closes the gap. I think he gets touched a lot. I think when Conor touches him with uppercuts and knees on the way in and down, it's gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna be a short night. I'm hoping he can take some shots and and wrestle him down and do some of his own work too. And Conor's gonna get to show everybody. That it ain't it ain't that hard to scramble out from underneath a man that's just trying to take you down and hug on you real tight. And you know, obviously Khabib works on the ground, he gets his ground and pound going, but I he doesn't have power. He's hitting you, he's not hurting anybody. Aliquinta's a little guy. Uh, Connor's a big big porcupine. You can't hold on to a porcupine, he's gonna poke you. Connor's been talking about a one sixty five pound division. Are you uh, could you get down to 165? Yeah. Just five more pounds? Absolutely. I think 165 is a, is a great division for me to go into. I, I stay at 172. It doesn't bother me, man. He was also talking about going up to 170, and he was talking about fighting Anderson Silva, but, you know, um, but I know things about fighting that other regular people might not know, that him being the smaller, faster fighter, fighting a striking fight against one of the great strikers in Anderson Silva, uh, he has advantages being smaller, being shorter, with still very long arms, and he'll get to move his feet fast side to side. You know, he might confuse Anderson a little bit. He's got some tricks, so I, I don't know if they'll make that, but, um, you know, I got my shit to do November 10th against the Cowboy. I got to handle business business there and once I do that we'll see where the next step is for me but I'm working my way towards a big Connor million dollar fight are you worried at all that uh, Cerrone may not be ready after that Instagram post I don't think that was very real man I don't know if he was just playing with the people's emotions trying to play with mine um, or trying to trying to get some type of you know trying to take something away from me so when I beat his ass people think Ah, uh, he didn't beat a, a fully functioning Cowboy Cerrone, but no, I think this is going to be the best Cowboy Cerrone that stepped in the octagon uh, in the latest of times because he's, you know, the way he is in his last six fights, um, he's looking at that and he's got a legacy to leave. I watched him fight, I watched the old fight, Benson Henderson versus Cowboy the other day in WEC. Man, they were scrapping. Nine and one, ten and one were their records, something like that. What a scrap that was. I, I don't know if that's the cowboy that I'm going to see. He was scrapping in that fight, and he gave it all, and he still didn't win that decision. So, uh, you know, I'm not looking to go to a decision. I'm looking to rip his face apart and put him to sleep. How about the flip side? Is this going to be the best Mike Perry? 
absolutely. Uh, I, I got extra time in in the mountains uh, with Jackson Wink and uh, Frank the Tank. We got the mitts working, and uh, I'm, I mean, I, I just went home to Florida, hit mitts with my old coach. Everybody can see how much sharper I am from from working uh, the repetition every day, constantly. You know, every day I'm working shoulders up, hands up, knees bent, work side to side. And the more that I do that, the more that I do that, the more it becomes natural. And I'm doing it every single day. I'm too powerful. How's the atmosphere right now at, uh, at Jackson's? I mean, after Cowboy came out on the, on, on the Joe Rogan show and said that, what, uh, what's it like? Uh, the atmosphere in Albuquerque, New Mexico is a little hard to breathe, man. You know what I'm saying? You're up there, the elevation takes some of the oxygen, and uh, I get what you're saying, but ain't nobody worried about none of that. Uh, if anything, if there is some tension, if there is some people, you know, kind of ducking their heads around me or something like that, that only adds to it. It keeps the pressure on me, and that keeps me sharp, keeps me going, because the night of the fight, I'm, I'm definitely going to feel some pressure, and I'm sure Cowboy will too, but that's why we do this shit, man. Any, any plans to uh, bury the hatchet the once it's all over with? I mean, there's, I don't know if there is a hatchet, you know what I'm saying? It's just, Cowboy, uh, the, the media turns it into one thing, like me and Cowboy was the best of friends and then we switched up. I mean, some of the people who know him just took an opportunity with training a younger fighter who's got more ahead of him, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, people compare, oh, like the Tiger Woods thing. So many people said he wasn't, he was never going to be the old Tiger again. And then he came back and he won this tournament. But this ain't golf. You know what I'm saying? You can't play this shit till you 80. So. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the guys you've uh, developed a good relationship with at Jackson's is John Jones. And we see that he's going to be returning. How happy were you for him to see him, uh, you know, get back in the octagon? Oh, man. I'm super excited for John, man. Uh, he gets to continue his legacy as being the greatest right now. And, uh, you know, nobody's really, uh, it, it is what it is. His skills did the job. People believe in that. And um, his skills are going to return to the octagon. He ain't going to fail no more tests. You know what I'm saying? He's training hard. And I'm grateful to learn from a great champion like that. It seems like you guys clicked right away. Uh, what was that when you first met him? Uh, you know, describe that exchange that you guys had. Real recognized real, bro. It is what it is. It's, it's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shit, we both like the same things in life. Get money, fucking people up, pretty girls, you know what I'm saying? But he got family and all that, so I'm saying. But he, he points them out to me like, hey, Mike, go get those ones. <laughs> what did you make of Till versus Woodley? Fuck, thank God a champion did what we've been waiting for a champion to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that shows that the 18 fights Darren Till has, it shows the uh, little bit of padding in his record. Not that the padding was intentional on his part. I'm sure he took the fights as they came to him. But, um, you know, I knew T. Woodley was strong, but how many times in this sport have I been like, man, this, it should go this way, this guy should kill this guy, and then I'd just be totally wrong. But I was, I was like, man, I'm hoping he does that. And then I was kind of second guessing myself because every time I've done it, it didn't go that way. So I was like, I don't know, Tills. And, and here's the thing about it. What we want to see in somebody is be excited. And Till was very excited. He was very happy to be there. He's like, yeah, I'm the best. And then T. Woodley was like over it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm tired of y'all talking shit all the time. I always do. Watch what I do. Watch what I do. And we were like, we don't know if we can believe it. And then he came out there and he did it, man. 100% ass whooping to the best of his ability. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I just, ain't nobody gonna do that shit to me. It ain't going down like that. Not 90 to, to zero. I'm, I'm coming at everybody's throat. Even in fights that I've been losing, I've been bleeding like a motherfucker. Check the third round, bro. Check the fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming at these guys' heads. And there's little tricks that people play that I didn't see before, and I, I'm learning from that, like Ponzinibbio. I hit him with the overhand right, but he's like pulling away and he's drawing me in as he's running backwards, setting things up. I'm seeing that now, and I'm not just chasing after people all willy-nilly, you know what I'm saying? I can be patient. I hit you, you run away, trying to bait me in. I just let you look stupid. <laughs>